So, hello everyone, um, I'm Rakesh. I'm going to be talking to you today about search for exotonic superconductivity using transition metal dye carbonide and carbon composites. Um, so, in general, when you pass the current through a conductor, you get uh, energy losses uh, as heat due to resistance. However, in a superconductor, there's no uh, DC resistance. Therefore, you can pass the current through the superconductor indefinitely with any, without any loss in energy. What's more, um, a superconductor can expel all external magnetic field lines from within itself. So these two properties combined lend superconductors to many very different um, uh, applications, such as maglev trains and MRI machines. One of the big uh, drawbacks from superconductors being used more widely in industry is that they require cryogenic cooling, be that with liquid helium or liquid nitrogen. So in this project, we sort of aim to um, explore this new form of superconductivity known as excitonic superconductivity. And the method by which this works is generally you, ex you apply an external light source and that excites electrons in the sample to potentially then carry a supercurrent and induce superconductivity. And in theory, this could happen at any temperature, at room temperature even. So um, the, the way that we are trying to potentially realise this new form of superconductivity is we take carbon fibres that have been surface functionalised with um, metallophilic groups and we decorate them with tungsten diselenide nanoparticles. To make these nanoparticles, we take tungsten diselenide, grind it into a fine powder and sonicate them in ethanol in an ice bath for up to six hours. We can then dip the carbon fibres into the, uh, the nanoparticle solution, and once dry, it yields a homogeneous coating of tungsten dioxide nanoparticles over the surface of the fibre. Some of the key findings from uh, this project so far, um, what we've seen is that using the sonication method, we can make uh, tungsten dioxide nanoparticles that are on average about 2.94 nanometers in size, with a very low polydispersity index. Taking the carbon fibres, we can then test for superconductivity in what's known as an optical cryostat, where we can measure its resistance uh, in the temperature range from 4.5 to 300 Kelvin. Um, and what's seen is that when an external light source is applied to the, the fibres, a significant drop in resistivity of 12.53 ohm micrometers is, is observed. However, we do not yet see superconductivity in the system. It's thought that this potential drop in, uh, sorry, it's thought that a significant drop in resistivity may be due to excitonic contributions, and um, it shows good promise that the system may be able to be tuned in the future to potentially induce superconductivity. So in conclusion, this layer of tungsten diselenide on top of the carbon fibre has been shown to significantly reduce resist, uh, resistivity. However, we've not yet seen any sort of signs of superconductivity. Moving forward, we'd like to see if this system can be tuned to potentially induce superconductivity at room temperature or even at maybe a slightly lower temperature. So just to end, I'd like to thank Professor Hall and the Hall Research Group, Professor Steve Icorn and Dr Chris Bell, and as well uh, Professor Luke Kenderson at Deakin University in Australia for providing all the fibres that we've used in these experiments.